And welcome to another episode of Pastor Remote. I'm Joe, that's Mitch. On Twitter, Halftime Joe, Mitch692. Of course, want to thank again to the Patreons who support us even, you know, we have flaws in the way we do stuff. Uh, so I mean, everyone's human, you know. Yeah. Like, you can't... No, no one's perfect. So. 2018 is what, I'm, uh, is what I'm telling you. 2018 right. is going to be, it's going to be the year. Uh, 2018 is going to be the big bang. It's what I always like to say. It was what everybody says at the beginning of the year. And then it's like, dude, yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym every day for 2018. Yeah, so what no. you say is new year, new you. Yeah, exactly. Is what you say. Um, so on the show today, we are going to be talking about, mo- for shows of the week, mostly The Punisher. And because that's the big one that came out and that's the one that should be talked about. And then, of course, this week... We're gonna have runaways, and then the the week after, I think we're gonna have Shield. So you know, we're gonna so we're having a Marvel heavy week, and then next week is the one where it's the crossover show. So, uh, but we do have one piece of news. Technically, this is the only kind of big thing I saw. There are smaller things, but I thought we could probably give more time to the Punisher. However, uh, that holds up because. Uh, I finished it, we'll, Mitch. We'll get to yeah, it when we get to it. Yeah, yeah, we'll get into it, get into it. So, with that, we're going to start off with the first piece of news, quote-unquote news, and that's going to be Crisis on Earth X crossover promo. So, this is a new promo. The first one was a teaser, then there was like a, maybe in a more extended teaser, this is an official promo, and it gives a lot more footage, and there's actually photos that have been released, like about like 68 photos of uh, this crossover and uh, what you're going to be able to see. And, you know, I'm just going to say it. I told Mitch before the show, this is my Justice League. This is literally yeah. my... You see all those uh, characters well, together? Is, isn't this basically, at this point, everyone's Justice League? Yeah, this is it's like... kind of like, oh, the movie. <laughs> I mean, this is even bigger than Justice League because it has way more characters. Like, they've already built up all the, these characters in multiple shows and whether it's uh, appearances from here and there or they're the main characters... But the only they like CW or not, they've done this in the correct way. They 2012. It took them five years to get how many characters? Like 15 characters on screen at the same time that all like we all know and love. So it's like, damn. I still remember when it was just. Uh, I think it was like 2013 when it was just Barry and Oliver, and they had first introduced yeah. Barry Allen, and then the year after is like uh, I think. What was the one year after? It might have been the one... I don't think it's the Alien one, was it? Because there's... I think there's this one. There's the Alien one that was last year. What was the one the year before? Oh, you talking about crossover. You meant, you meant the shows, not crossover. No, um, yeah, I meant the crossover. The Alien one was last year. The Invasion. There's that one. And then, of course, there yeah, was... A... That was the first one. The, the Alien one was the start oh. of these big... Wasn't it? No, I get it. Okay, so there's four crossovers technically, right? There is the one where Barry first comes to, uh, you know, Starling City as what they called it back in the day. Are you talking about the backdoor pilot flashhead? Yeah, so that was technically a that's crossover. Not really, that's not really a crossover. Oh, okay. You it wasn't crossing over with anything because Flash didn't exist at that point. Uh, okay, well then the first official crossover was the one where. Uh, they fought against Captain Boomerang, and then they also fought against like uh, some dude who could like control emotions. That was the first wasn't one. That, wasn't that the episode where Arrow shot him? Yeah, that was like, like the official crossover. Crazy. Yeah, because that was the first one because the Diggle and all them went to Flash, and then Flash characters went to uh, like Arrow. So that was like the first official crossover. The Invasion one was the second one, and then this one, uh, Crisis on Earth X, is going to be the official third one. And you see the the build up to it, where it was just smaller, and then now they built up with all these different characters. Some have go, uh, come and go, and look, this I I don't know. I'm a hundred percent about this one being Barry and Iris having a wedding, but because I'm still iffy I mean, on she's Iris. Die. Yeah, I, I'm still yeah. iffy on Iris, but I love the aspect of this is from a different universe and they're all Nazi versions. Like there is a shot in the promo where it's Stephen Amell as a Nazi leader. It's like, yeah. okay. It's, I don't know. It's strange. It's very much like metal at the minute. Not kind. It's not exactly like metal, but it's like, Oh look, there's evil Batman in metal. Oh there's yeah. Like, the, there's evil Supergirl. There's, 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 there's evil. Nazi characters yeah. Now. yeah. Um, I, but you know, just talking about this promo real quick, like, 
you see the shot of all of them, right? Like they're they're in the wave right of the ship. Mm-hmm. And one thing I would take away is probably Felicity and Iris. I don't know if they need to be there. Yeah, yeah. It's just like what are you two gonna like, do. At least, yeah. uh, at least Supergirl's sister is an actual like super like secret agent type of stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just sad we don't have Martian Manhunter in this. Um, but, yeah, because, like, the Flash is super good. Like, Felicity's right in front of the Flash. Like, I feel like the Flash would probably be up there with Green Arrow. You know what I mean? It's, it's CW's way of going. Look what we got. But just to remind you that we're CW, still. Yeah. Uh... Here's, here's, here's the love interest drama. Um, but uh, I do love that, at least for Captain Cole, this will probably be his last one. And it's he yeah. has the actual glasses where it's like the little lines of them. So yeah. it looks like they all just look really comic-y. Like, yeah. if you ask me. like And oh, also very leathery. So. Oh, I mean, you know, just think of the amount of cows. And actually, speaking <laughs> of this, can we talk about the race costume or lack thereof? It's horrific. Yeah. I, uh, I like, mean, he looks worse than when they put that bucket on Diggle's head. The the only because the Ray's costume usually at least or at least the Rebirth one was all kind of lit up and I feel like they could have yeah. got away with that somehow like they could have done that version of it but this is like I guess this is what they were trying to go for but with leather you know what I mean yeah it just looks like um a very bad cosplay of Doctor Fate. Yeah, I could I could see that. And um, it's just like, oh, that, that that helmet or quote helmet is really bad. It's like not even sitting on its head. It's kind of like lifting up like a bad wig. Yeah. Um. Really. So as for like the story, I mean, there's technically it's just like these people are crossing over and they're gonna try to stop them. It's like it's not that big of a story. It's gonna be more about the characters and like yeah. it always kind of is, which I've begun to be more fine with, especially if they kind of don't segue away from it whereas last year even though i like to say that the 100th arrow episode was part of the crossover it was more arrow than it was the crossover uh as people stated so this time around it's gonna be on two nights it's gonna be arrow supergirl on monday legends of flash on a tuesday and they're all gonna actually have something to do with the crossover so it's gonna give more time because i felt like even though we had a lot of time you still probably needed more time with these characters last year um, yeah. maybe, maybe they learned, you know what I mean? So, who knows? Maybe. Yeah, I. Overall, it I'm looks, just excited. It looks like they have. Like, yeah. just from this promo, it looks like they're kind of going, well, people expect a certain thing. Yeah. We have to deliver that sort of thing. So. And they're not really shying away from how comic they are, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you see Supergirl's costume, and it's. I, you know, it is very Dark Knights Meadow where it's going just all out. Let's go. Different mm-hmm. multiverse, they're all Nazi versions. Let's go. Like, let's do this. This is this is probably the only time some people are going to watch the CW shows this year, but I think I'm okay with that. Like, this is 22 I mean, episodes. Yeah. Nah, you know, it's... <laughs> 22 episodes is too long for 2017, and I think they should have, they should have been shortened by now so that yeah. you can focus the story more, but... And you can I mean, it, it depends on what you do, you know. You look at S.H.I.E.L.D. They still have 22 episodes, but they know how to uh, not stretch out a story, you know. You yeah. Split it into three. Yeah, but um, I guess... I think that's what people uh, should kind of look at more. Yeah. It's just like, oh, let's not just do one thing for the entire thing. Let's be clever here and do have three. Have, like, two or three different uh, arcs. Yeah. Um, like a comic. Uh, but... Yeah. I, I think I'm still on the bandwagon of that Legends should have been the crossover event or whatever every year, uh, eight episodes yeah. when it's uh, on break and whatever. Like, that should have been the crossover event. Like, yeah, I don't think you needed this, but this is still cool. Like, they all show up in each other's shows. Like, It's like, why wasn't Legends of Defenders before Defenders? Yeah, exactly. That That's exactly what it should have been, and it tried to be in that trailer that came out, but it wasn't when the actual... Uh, show came out so but and it the only thing I can bring up more about this actual like promo is just the, the fact that you're probably gonna see Martin Stein like this might be like the Firestorm's last hurrah type of thing um, I'd I, imagine it would I'd imagine yeah. it's probably gonna be the end for that and Captain Cold yeah, since I, they're both going like just I think I saw Prometheus, though, and he died in season six of Arrow. So this is, of course, from, like, a different universe. So I think that's fine. But 
I think they're gonna show that he's Prometheus, like a male is gonna be Prometheus and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. to me, this is just this, like I said, this is my Justice League. I'm super excited for this. I still need to catch up on the shows, though. <laughs> I'm not necessarily caught up on all of them. Um, I'm caught up on Arrow, but I'm not caught up on the other ones. I'm still an episode or two behind. So yeah, I might watch the crossover to be honest. I think I definitely think it'll be better than last year's, and I think it'll just be a lot of fun. You know what I mean? Like, I would it, say it it looks like it's just fun. Yeah. Like for CW, it looks fun, and it won't be two two different story, like two different uh like type of things in one thing. You know what I mean? Like how like yeah. we saw Justice League, and my thing was always that just felt two different styles. This is just gonna be one style of let's go, let's let's do this. This is uh DC Comics. We have all these superheroes. Multiverses, let's go. And it's a crisis. They finally did a crisis. I mean, you, you can't not do a crisis with yeah. DC, can you? Like... Yeah. Uh, man, just decided. I I was like one of the biggest fans of Arrow when it came out. And I know so, not everybody was. It took a, everybody a little bit more to like season two. But then even more people dropped off after season two because three and four sucked. But this is just, this is like, you know, my Justice League, my Infinity War. This is five years <laughs> built yeah on this type of stuff so i'm excited man uh other than that i think there's really it to uh talk about for news so we are gonna get into now the punisher uh season one and we're just gonna say it all uh straight off the bat i finished i don't think mitch has no nope. it's i'm uh, having trouble i'm having yeah, a and we're problem. we're definitely gonna get into that but uh just first impressions like all around just like what is like the first thing that comes to your mind when you think about it like it's dull as fuck. Okay. And that's literally... It, that's the only reason why I haven't finished it. And well, I said the only reason. Like, you know, I'm up to that arc with the PTSD guy. Yeah. Like, the soldier. And it's just... I don't know. I'm... I've become one of those people where it's like, I've got enough of this... Or I'm seeing enough of this in real life. I don't need to watch about it. No, yeah. uh, it's just... I- I couldn't have been more on the opposite end of the spectrum. I actually really love The Punisher, and I think it's exciting to me. And I think uh, there's like, here's just here's my thing, yeah. right? It's the action's really good. The action's really well done, and the, the music choice. Oh, the music the, choice is the, great. Yeah. Scenes, it's fantastic. It's not a bad show. It's well made. It's well written. They just know that Frank Castle can't carry thirteen episodes. See. The only thing I'd argue about that is uh, the fact that they just wanted to build something that's very current in this. But the whole yeah, but it's uh, you know it's they've they've given they've made that this Dina woman or whatever her fucking name yeah. is, and it's like no. right we we'll get we're gonna make her Frank Castle et, and she's gonna be in half the, like half an episode every episode, so Frank Castle hasn't got a pad out entire one because he can't. I, and that's I, and that's what like she feels so forced in this show, and it's just like I don't care about you. Like I'm not watching this show for someone else. I'm watching the show for the Punisher. Give me the Punisher. See, I would have argued. I think he could have if you added more of that him with the family with the Lieberman family. I actually really wanted more yes, of that. He, he could have, and that stuff is good. I really wanted but it's more the fact of that. that they they're kind of like. There's too many side characters. Like, M- M- Micro is great. Micro is the only reason why I actually carried on watching to like episode seven. Eh, he's iffy for me. It's like, you know. and it's just like you know, everyone else. It's just, I, it's just, I don't know. It's just I, so boring. To to me, like the difference between this and what's the one? Either Luke Cage or uh, Iron Fist, whichever one really had too many side plots. Um, it might be Iron Fist. But yeah. to me, this one has a better through line than most, you know? See, I don't, I couldn't even tell what the through line is. I'm, I'm struggling to it, remember any of it. It's kind of hard. It's that one mission. It's all based on that. Everything is through that. Every character has an interaction with that in that sense. And, um, like, so the guy who gets killed, oh, spoilers, but <laughs> the guy who gets killed in uh, that one video where Frank has to kill him, that's the guy that the woman is talking about, Madani. That yeah. that she d- came back because he died. That they killed him. So there's like a through line through all that. And um, with the uh, with with the wow, the PTSD guy, his through line is the fact that he's supposed to be 
what I think the Frank could have been in that sense. Like he could have been even more crazy. I mean, like, yeah, I like, I get that, but it's just like I don't know. It's... I I'm just I I don't I think the side characters worked really well. Like Curtis, I thought he worked well. Um, I I really loved Billy Russo. The guy who played Billy Russo. I was like, I could d- d- dig this dude. I hope he's in a movie somewhere sometime. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, well. He was in the Chronicles of Narnia, so he was in a... Oh, he was in Westworld! I don't remember him! Who was he in Westworld? Uh, Logan. Was he the guy that's like, was designing everything? He was the designer, and he was, like, very, like, iffy, like, oh, you're messing up my yeah. story and stuff like that. Yeah. He's, he's that yeah, guy. He's yeah. so good. He's really He good. was a not bad in that show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I thought he was really good in this. Um, He was really good, though, you know. Um, but, so, like, just the overall thing, I thought... You said the side. You thought the side character was boring. I thought it was very interesting to me. Like from the get go, I was interested in all of them. I think Madonna was the one I was least interested in. The only reason I kind of got more interested in her story was because of the sidekick guy who was like being kind of like funny now and then. Who uh, nobody that the like. She's banging. Wait, what? Oh, no, 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 no. The sidekick guy that, that was like who died. The one that she oh, like her partner, her partner. Her yeah. partner. So. Um, just that, but, and I, I thought, like, Micro and how they were doing the same kind of thing as Frank, except his family lived, and he's the one who quote-unquote died, so I I just thought, like, all around, I, it just interested me. I finished it, and the only reason I didn't finish it in one day was because I had to go out places, but I probably would have. This was, I, I'd agree that the last couple episodes kind of waned me down a bit, but. Oh, God. Yeah, but I thought the. Overall, it was just great. I lo- I low-key thought that one time, like, I think episode 8 or whatever, where there was an explosion, I thought that was going to be, like, a Defenders kind of, like, reference, but I was like, oh, no, it was just a... Uh, yeah, PTSD. I was, I was yeah. waiting for it. I was, like, I don't know. And then I was I like, that's, oh... That's another thing as well. Like, no, like, you know, it's got Karen in it. It's like, why Karen? Like, I get that it's happening at the same time as Defenders, or supposedly, anyway. Yeah. But it's just like, ooh, where's everything? Like, you could have... You, you could have had it, like yeah. on the uh, on the back like a newscast of uh, yeah. Daredevil or like Luke Cage, Jessica Jones escape custody type of stuff. Also, I don't know if it happens in the last like four episodes, but has like where's this new Marvel hero or they that someone said there's going to be in here, like one of the Marvel execs. Ah, uh, there's to my knowledge, I I did not see anything. If anything. They might be hinting at what Billy Russo could be because they make it a point to pan over to him in a uh, ra- his face is wrapped up like in bandages. Yeah. And they make it a point to state to him. And they say he might remember something or he might remember nothing at all. I think that might be what they're talking about. But other than that, like there's really no other quote unquote Cause hero. Because like, like, there's been no like articles about anything. It's just kind of oh. like oh. There's no hero. Who who yeah. were they talking about? What the heck? No, because the fact they they said a new one. That's like, does that mean it's a brand new character you haven't seen before? Like, or has that had to be cut out because the whole Netflix Disney thing? Maybe it's cut out because I just there's nothing. Like it kind of ends just abruptly too. Uh, which it kind of, it, oh, they're the fucking worst endings. It, it it well it ends on a heartwarming thing, but it's like so it doesn't really end where. It might get a season two. Like, it seems like it's just a, one season. Like, they don't want a season two. It seems like it just... There's a story. I'd hope and, so. And they didn't... Well, it just seems like they didn't put anything to... For like, a cliffhanger type of sorts to tease or whatever. Like, yeah. it just ends. Like, the story just ends. So... Yeah. And it's just like, oh, wait, what? There's not more? What? Huh? Like, they don't like to tease anything? Like, the only thing that seems like that is when they pan to Billy Russo being all bandaged up. And I don't see how anybody gets anything from that, though. It's like... No, it's just him, and he might come back, but he might be like a villain again. It's just he just might not remember. I don't know. He might be a good guy because he might not remember anything. But I just, other than that, like, I'm telling you, to me, just overall, I was interested in throughout the whole thing. But let's um, let's get into kind of like the character aspects of him. Like, who was if you could give a like the character who made you want to keep seeing more? Was it Micro? Yeah, <laughs> the only character, but apart from Frank, because Bernard does a good job in this as well. Oh, I'm all John uh, Berthold. He is my yeah. guy. He, I bought stalking him so long ago, and I'm so glad. Like, he just goes all out. I just wish they gave him more to do with the family, but that's just me. 
Mm. But just that that micro Frank dynamic is so well done. But uh, it's just a shame it's not the entire like it's not the focus of the show. Yeah, and I'll let you know that kind of it doesn't seem like they'll be teaming up later. It seems mm. like they're just done. Like the story's done. Like I'm telling, like the story's done. Like there's no. There's going to be a micro and Punisher. They're going to have the Punisher van type of thing. Like, there's no none of that for after. There's no... It's... I mean, as it stands right now, I couldn't care if there is <laughs> To be honest, I'm, I couldn't care if there's, there's nine... I've got four more hours left. It's just like, yeah. okay. It doesn't help as well that it's such a generic... Oh, it's a government cover-up. It's just like, oh, come on. Like, I get it's the Punisher. It's kind of what he does. But at the same time... Can we have something more interesting here? Oh. And can we stop this whole, like, let's make him relatable, let's make you like him, let's make you not like him, let's make you like him, let's make you not like him. Like, it's just the same thing. It, it's like, come on. It does get more bloody, though, later. It was like, yo, okay, yeah, calm but, down. Uh, that doesn't calm really... Down. <laughs> uh, I, mean, um, I suppose I should, I should only really be watching the Punisher for stuff like that, so... But, yeah, um... But yeah, Micro was good. I didn't think he was necessarily my favorite, but... Uh, I did think he was good, and uh, especially when they were like he has Frank tied up, and then Frank has him tied up and stuff like that. Um, I thought Is that when good. he's like, I've been like recording you. And, yeah. Like, if I don't do this, yeah, I, I love that scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, so good. he's pretty smart. Um, sometimes they make him like a little stupid, like, but that's because like the emotional drama of it, where he goes to see his family, and he's not supposed to. It's like, come yeah. on, bro, you know better. You're smarter than this. But it, I guess that's the emotional the bag, uh, baggage he has and stuff like that. Um, but for me, I got, I really love Billy Russo. Like everything he had to do, I kind of knew he was gonna be a bad guy. I like, I kind of like assumed, but I kind of didn't want him to be because I just thought he was great. Like, you know, yeah. I I thought the actor did a great job, and he just has this like suave to him that I'm like, bro, you can literally do whatever you want. <laughs> literally do whatever you want. But yeah, I I thought. He was great, and I thought the whole aspect of they were brothers, and now he kind of gave them up in that type of sense. And he still, like, looks out for him towards the end. Like, he actually uh, wants him to, uh, like, die peacefully in that type of sense. Like, he doesn't want to abuse his friend in that, that type of sense. You know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. I said, like, there's a code of honor between the both of them that I still very much enjoy. And Billy just does a good job. Like, the dude, Ben Barnes, the actor, just does a really good job with it. Um, yeah. If you had to, what well, what was like your favorite moment though this episode? What was the moment that you're like, this is the like this is why I wanted to watch The Punisher. Um, it's really hard to think of one. Um, probably that micro scene. Yeah, yeah. Probably that one. Um. The sledgehammer fight at the end of the first episode was really that, fucking good. That, that one was, was mine. really well yeah. done. I think that first episode was perfect. Yeah. That saved the entire series for me. I almost didn't even watch past episode one. Yeah. Just because, like, it's slow up until where I am now. It was stupidly slow for the first three. And the fact that the third episode virtually stops... It's just like, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, uh, it kind of does, right? Yeah. And it's like, there's been that one action scene. What the fuck have you Wait, done have with you, this property? Have you seen the episode where they go like back through everybody's perspective of like the hotel? Are you on um, I'm on episode nine. Oh, it might be. Uh, it might I be don't 10, think actually. so. Because there's an episode where the uh, PTSD guy... Um, no, it's the episode 10. PTSD guy attacks, like, one of the senators or whatever, and then they recount the episode through everybody's perspective, like Madani, Billy, Frank, yeah. Karen, and the senator guy, because the cop is trying to figure out what happened. And It's an interesting yeah. episode. Uh, don't know too crazy about it, but uh, it was just, like, an interesting uh, way to go with the show, because I didn't expect something like that, but... Oh. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's, I don't know, like, as a whole, yeah. like, I like what the show, it, like, oh, it's so, it's so strange, like, I, I should have really finished it before this. No, um, I mean, you don't, know, you know. It's just one of, it's, I don't know, I just really struggled to actually sit there and watch it in chunks. Like, I didn't watch it at all Saturday, I just took that, I was like, I just can't. Yeah. And then Sunday, I kind of fucked up with the timing of it, it's just like, oh. But, um. Like, what is the show's trying to set the whole like gun violence thing and like how you treat like 
the ex-military and all that, like your yeah. veterans. It does that stuff well. Oh yeah, I love that too. Yeah, I've seen things do it better. Is the problem, and I've seen things do it better a million times before. And it's just like really, it kind of this should have been the top of all that, especially with like. Uh, what's it, the guy's name that makes the nail bomb? Yeah, the PTSD guy. Um, the dude is um Lewis. Yeah, like he's not a great actor, to be honest. No, but I, 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 yeah. don't, I don't really. Especially when he's got the gun in his mouth, it's like I'm not buying this at all. But uh, but I did kind of shed a tear when he almost shot his dad. I was like, oh my god, bro! <laughs> he literally almost shot his dad, and then his dad. I he, like. I don't know. To me, I thought each of the side stories kind of had a good enough of story for me to get invested, at least for me yeah, personally. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be good enough. Like, you know, Luke Cage was good enough. Iron Fist wasn't good enough. Nah, Luke Cage yeah. wasn't good enough. Look, Luke Cage was well, the first six episodes, no. and then it was like nothing. Um, but I, like, after episode eight of Luke Cage, like, apart from especially the ending, it was good enough. Oh, like, well. It wasn't... That, that that's not what I mean by good enough. Uh, I I just mean like because that it makes it sound like it's uh like I just thought it was okay. Like no, I actually really liked the side plots. I was really invested into them because uh the, like the father he was ex military and then they they sat down to watch like an old fight and he was like giving like advice like and then um I thought that was great and then the which one was it um Madonna I thought was. The the least one, even though she was supposed to be the bigger bigger one out of all of them. Yeah, she's I, just she just feels so forced. I I just wish they'd show more of her dad because they show her dad. I think in the last episode or second to last, and he seems like he gives a line that I thought would have been great to uh, been around Madonna's storyline, and the line is um, because um Frank is injured right, and they're trying to save him, and he's like a doctor. And the mom is like saying, "Oh, you know who he is? Like he's a wanted uh, person and all this. We shouldn't be having him here." And he says, "You know better." I think uh, paraphrasing, he says something about, "You know better than all of us. Sometimes a criminal can be a freedom fighter." I thought that line yeah, should have been yeah. more around Madonna's story. But line. at the same time, isn't that kind of glorifying what the Punisher does? And that's something you shouldn't really do with the well, Punisher. Uh, uh, yeah, but no, I, I, that that not. A massive, you know, that's, that's bringing personal politics. Yeah, it's yeah, true. Like, it's, it's kind of like it makes me cringe a little bit, too perfectly honest. Uh, to it's me, like, oh no, don't no, that's. I like, no wonder you pushed this back after Vegas. Like, no, I can see why. <laughs> I agreed before the show, but when I saw some of the show and um, just that line too, when he says it, I I thought like. It, I guess to some it is glorifying. I thought it was a necessary evil in that sense. Of... I mean, I mean, saying that the Punisher is a freedom, like freedom fighter, freedom fighter is a good thing. Yeah, uh, kind of saying that. Uh, well, I, no, I. But then again, that's uh, up the whole topic of is the Punisher still relevant in today's world? I'll, I'll get. He's I'll, terrifically relevant. But... I'll give you this: uh, they do his character does adapt in the end. There is a different side of him that you don't see, and that he is. Um, he learns at the end. He actually learns. Um, something. Do, now do, using rubber bullets. No, do you want? Room. Do you want? Do you want me to let you know? Because I don't. I know. mean, you you can tell me. Like, All right, well, um, he's fight. He's fighting off with Billy Russo at the place where his kids got killed, right? And yeah. uh, you know, shocker, retcon. I think Billy Russo was there when his kids got killed. Um, that might have been a retcon, but other than that, well, like, he never saw his kids get killed. It's true. Um, but he was there. He never like, saw his wife die. He was there with the family. So Billy was yeah. there with the family, so they like they still cared about each other, I guess, around that time and um they were facing off each other and he ends up not killing Billy, as you could tell from when I said he had all the bandages, but he ends up just really beating up bad. He says, Death isn't uh good enough. You have to pay for your sins and that's gonna be uh in jail. And he learns and he actually goes to group therapy at the end. He talks about uh the war and stuff like that. So he actually learns and he's opening up and stuff like that. Uh, he is, uh, he changes a bit towards, uh, like, this whole thing does change him, uh, a bit, which I really like in that, and I'll give him that, like, he might be more of, like, the freedom fighter towards the end, in that type of sense. Like, maybe in the beginning, yeah. he was just, like, yeah. he was just a guy who was killing to kill, uh, for, like, cause he was mad, but now he actually had a purpose in that sense. Like, he's doing yeah. it for the good, and he kind of, um, 
you there's know, a bigger reason why. Yeah, that. you know, most vigilantes start off with having a personal reason, and then they learn that yeah. it's more than just being personal. It's about what's doing. It's about what's right. You know. So yeah, yeah. There's. I tell you what. I, I think like my biggest issue with the show is the first few episodes very much. You know, I, I said it before. They focus on kind of why he's doing this. Yeah. When we didn't need to see that, we had an entire arc with it with Daredevil season two. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, we don't, like, sure, I get it, people haven't watched them all, but we don't need to, like, constantly focus on it. It's just like yeah. Um, But uh, I'm trying to think, what what else uh, about, like, the show, I I think... Well, quickly, does he uh, get the costume back? Yeah, 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 so yeah he gets the costume back. that was really back. strange, the fact that he just ditches it in the first episode. It's like, is this, is this in humans? Like, what am I watching? <laughs> he, gets a, he gets a better costume later. It looks like he has a bigger skull, and it just, like... It looks better. Bigger. It was in his entire chest before. He had the oh, Kevlar. Was it? It was huge. Yeah, it was oh. a massive like Kevlar vest. Oh, I thought it wasn't all the way like on the whole chest. Okay, because this it might be the same size. Then. Like, Google it. It was okay, massive. But, okay, well, I'm just I'm on IMDb, so I'm gonna look at the first episode. Was it in the first episode or first? Yeah, well, first episode, Daredevil season two. Oh, okay. Um, in fact, if you look at if you're on IMDb and you look at the little trailer thumbnail. That's what he has at the start. Okay. It's that big. Because there's the one... Um... It might not be that defined with the teeth, but it was definitely Cause... as, like, his entire right. chest is taken up with it. Because there's, um, like, there's, I think, a teaser or a trailer or whatever it may be, and um, it was... It showed, like, him walking, and it had the skull and all that. That's, like, towards the end. That's, like, the second to last episode. Is that in the hallway, the pipes? Yeah. That's the yeah. second last episode where he basically goes like one man army on everybody. I'm like, yeah. God damn. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I know we do have differences of opinions on, on this uh, show, but I think you'll definitely, I like for me, it weighing down a bit, but toward, like the last four episodes, but it's still like, I think has a good way to end everything. Mm. And, but here's the thing that like, just to reiterate for people who are going to be like, oh, no, 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 no. It's like I don't, I don't hate this show. The show's not bad. Yeah, I just find it boring. Yeah, it's not for everybody. And, it's like, and for me, a Punisher show should not be boring. <laughs> that should be the last thing a Punisher show should be. Uh, but oh, I, I get they didn't want to do the whole let's no just overblow the action. No. Yeah, the music choices though. Don't we agree? Right? You said in the beginning, music choices. Oh yeah, music like, choices. Killing great. It. They killed it with the music choices and everything. Like I thought, the intro is the best intro they've ever had on a Netflix Marvel show. Don't agree. I find uh, it's. I, I don't see how anyone can think that. <laughs> I really. I think it's the There's music nothing. along with like the smoking aspect of it. I just really uh, dig it. Uh, but um, one thing I wanted to say was, what was if you could add one thing that could have been in the show, what would it have been? Or that one, if you can add one thing and take away one thing. Um, I take away the stupid bitch, the cup, yeah, the, the Donnie, um, yeah. Fr- female Frank Castle. I'd put in Moon Knight. Okay. I think there's another thing as well. I kind of set out with the expectation of someone else to be in here and to him be going after that. And uh, that might be a reason why I'm finding this more boring than I should do. Yeah. But I think that might have been a bit more interesting, like having him going after a new vigilante because he's not a great, like they, they're having the clash of ideals. Yeah. Even though that is just repeating. Yeah, that is the point. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, if you can make the person who's going after different from Daredevil, I think it could have worked. But that's me judging the show for what it is and when I should judge it for what so, it is and what it is it's still boring. But. You would take away the Madani storyline. You would add in a different hero, whether it be Moon Knight or whatever, but a different kind of hero. Uh, that he could go after. Uh, even Blade, like Blade, you could have made it really interesting with Blade. Yeah. Because that just throws a fucking spanner in the works. Oh, there's a guy killing people with swords. Yeah. Oh, they're not people, they're vampires. What the fuck am I doing with vampires? That could be a season two. Just saying. Because um, I think no, Jal well, Berto would do it no, perfect. There's no way Disney let Netflix have Blade. Yeah. <laughs> not with their streaming. No, but that would have been a perfect, like, uh, like for John Berto, like, Vampires, like what? Like he has this like gravelly voice you know, too. I love it's Jumbo like though. it's like people wanting Ghost Rider and Daredevil. Like it just flips the show. Like you know, yeah. you put this demonic character in the show that's about a guy of faith, and that's just gonna flip his entire world upside down. You put vampires in with the Punisher, it's kind of like, uh, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, 
I guess for me, if I were to have added something, that would have been uh, kind of similar, just a, a different hero, at least at the end, to kind of tease what's to go forward, anything like that type of thing. Because, um, you know, you did say that they said that there was a mystery hero at the end or something like that. Um, well, actually, they said there was something in there. I can't no, remember the exact word. But... To make it different, I'm going to add in, they should have had more of the Lieberman family with Frank. I thought there should have been more of yeah. that, because it was it went from... Oh, Frank didn't come to dinner to like two episodes and he's like, hey, how's it going? And that kid, what a bad kid. I want to kick him. Oh, like, what, the brother? Yeah. And oh, I, oh, that it kid. really I, doesn't I make sense, in my opinion, because they showed his character saying he warms up to Frank and that he actually cares about Frank. He's trying to be a better person. But he's the one who gives up Frank and he literally gets him and his mother uh, captured. Like, they kidnapped. So it's like they kind of ruined that aspect of it. They could they could have had it where the kid was helping like to have Frank uh, be safe and stuff like that. But I just thought that was one of the things that they messed up. Really, I was you just had the kid literally say that he was with them. He was playing football with Frank just the other episode. Like, yeah, yeah. What the heck. But yeah, I would have added more in that because I thought having that familial vibe to it, even though it kind of felt awkward. At times, because Michael was watching it, I was like, "Oh, I really yeah, wanna... that's that's a bit weird." And he's like, yeah, don't, "Don't steal my wife." I, I re- like, mm-hmm. yeah, I really wanted Frank, like, even if it wasn't his family, a family, to kind of have a ground of sense where he would have, because this would have, this is kind of like a trope in television where this he a character loses something but find something again that he's able to actually protect this time around. Like yeah. this one would have been the yeah. family that he's able to protect and he would have went badass guns blazing. Like, Oh, you don't want to mess with me. That type of thing. Um, but they don't necessarily do it that way. It's a very different way, but I just wish there was more of it. Like I wanted to see him, uh, apologize to the kid for not showing up to dinner. I wanted to see him more of that. I don't know. There was just something about it that brought him back from this, uh, maniac trying to kill people type of thing that I really enjoyed. And, it was just him and like John Bertha does it really well. He did it he did it well on The Walking Dead where he's like that father figure, that type of thing. He does it really well and I think more of it would have been a great watch in my opinion. I don't know if a lot of people are going to agree with me in that sense cuz maybe some people wanted more just Punisher killing pu- people, but I would have loved like Oh, well, I mean that's what anyone wants a Punisher. That's what he is. I don't know. I really would have loved him showing like the more uh, family vibe to him. I thought he has a different side to him that you don't see a lot of, but there you could if uh, mm-hmm. they did more of it. But that's just me. And I think what I would have took away was um, probably the Madonna storyline too. But if she's I'm... just boring. No, it, she's you can tell she's just a hundred percent there to pad out the plot. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably... a shame. You should have more Karen in it if you're going to have her. Because it seems like he cares about Karen, that he really likes her. Because he gives this line to Micro where he says, I didn't necessarily choose my wife in that sense. He says that he went out with her and then she got pregnant three months later. Yeah. So yeah. he kind of like, it's kind of like out of duty type of thing that they got married. So it kind of seems like he actually likes Karen and that whole um, love thing. So... I wish they would have. Which is kind of strange to me. It's like, well, that. It kind of. You know, oh, I didn't necessarily choose my wife. It's like, well, then why are you this angry about everything then? Because to me, that you're dismissing even even being married to us, that that implies you didn't really like his wife. You didn't really want his his kids. Uh, And it's just like, really? Like, that's that's not. I, I think. I don't know I get a different vibe from it. I just get the. But that's that's yeah. just how that comes. It comes across slightly. It's just like really. Uh, is that See, the angle you want to go for? I or? just wish they took out certain stuff that had like didn't need to, or they, and they could add in more. So they could have added in the family thing. They could have added in uh, that one aspect of him being more of a freedom fighter, that type of thing, and um, maybe him and Karen finding out uh like that they really like actually like each other in that sense and him because he actually seems like he cares like when micro says like this is my family this is everything and he says but she's the same man like that type of thing like i 
they teased it, but they don't necessarily go a lot. Like, they kind of really held back and just kind of did the usual with this. But I still yeah. think even with, it was above average usual for me. I still think yeah. there. I think it's up there. I don't know if it's actually the best one. I, I would have thought, if you would have said the first eight episodes, probably would have thought it was the best. But it's, I think towards the end, like, it's, you see the whole kind of cracks in it. But it's yeah. better than well, Luke Cage. to me that the first half of this yeah. isn't anywhere. It, this is like this the back end of Luke Cage for me. It's oh, kind really? of started to pick up in the second half. But I, I don't know. I, I, I can't obviously really say that because I haven't finished the show. But yeah. just from where I am now, the impression that I've got, it seems like they've done a Vicky Versi on the usual Netflix formula. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean... I don't think I don't know what else we can say about Punisher. I think that's really <laughs> yeah. Um, I really think that's all we could kind of say. We mentioned uh, everything. I'm trying to think of anything that we might have missed. Um, I think even if I finished the season, there wouldn't be much more. Yeah, we kind of feel like we go over everything. Um, Agent Orange, uh, and all that. Like, okay, I I did think that one part. Did you? It's you saw it already, right? Where he shoots the sniper and then it gets caught in the bulletproof glass. I thought that was a really great like that was, yeah, yeah i thought that, that was really great i was like okay we're about to finish this and there's about to be another villain or something or billy was going to be revealed to be the big bigger villain but no it's just no bulletproof glass okay um so yeah i think other than that there's not more to mention i'm really trying to look here of what really can we mention mm-hmm. Um, well, don't force it. Like, if you can't think of anything, you can't think of anything. Yeah, I kind of say my piece. Like, I really like the show, and I do like the PTSD aspect of it and how the veterans they and stuff like that. It, they handled that very well. Um, There was one scene, I don't know if you saw it already, where it was Lewis, the PTSD guy, and uh, with the cop, and the, he's saying, look, I'm not doing anything. I'm just trying to... And then the cop's kind of like, did you reach for my gun? And he didn't. Like... Yeah, yeah, that was really well done. I, I like, thought, wow, this... <laughs> yeah, I see. I felt like that storyline was kind of the more important one, uh, besides the micro. Yeah. Of course, I felt like that aspect of the kid and um, how uh, he's doing everything the wrong way, and uh, when well, the whole bomb bombing happened, and the thing with the how it's recorded in video, I just thought that was great. Like that was a great kind of scene right there. But yeah, I mean, there's not much to say. I guess just a final kind of. Um, uh, a a final kind of saying, like what, what it was. One last thing you want to say about this? It should have been a mini series. It should have been eight episodes. Yeah, I could see it. It would have, and you yeah. know, just get rid of the stupid woman side plot. Just have it all framed. Because like you know, it's it's literally half and half at this point. It would have just been seven or eight with all Frank. I definitely, I, I definitely think if you took out the Madani storyline, you just go all out with Lewis being the bad guy of that sense, and he's like a homemade bad guy, like, you know, where um, he, a lot of people, I guess, like, think that one of the more scarier things than terrorism is domestic terrorism, like, you, happening right yeah, there yeah. on you, and the people who who are supposed to be just people of the United States and stuff like that. So that could have been something, but they kind of go more on the Madani storyline. So I think, yeah, I would have been okay with getting rid of that one and doing more of the other stuff because I like the stuff with Curtis and how they were all talking and then how they kind of uh, say that one uh, big, uh, bigger guy who was like saying, oh, the government is trying to take away our guns and stuff like that. Like, um, you remember that guy, right? Um, he's the guy with Lewis that leaves him with the police. Like, oh yeah, he's yeah, like yeah, Lewis yeah. is like I got a witness, and then the guy just walks away. He actually wasn't like you saw it already, right? Where he wasn't an actual person in the military. Like he yeah, didn't do any yeah. tours. Like I think he yeah. signed up and then he never did anything. Because that's why he kills him, isn't it? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I just think that one was really a good storyline. But yeah, uh, other than that. Probably won't be a season two, and if there is, it's because Netflix or Marvel and Disney don't give Netflix any more characters, so they're gonna like go all out with the five that they have. Yeah, probably. Um, or the six, because you can't defend it. So they got six seasons. It's true. Uh, that's very true. Um, no, it's not like you just cutting them off with this many characters limits what they can do. You know, they've still got fucking years of stories they can do. Oh, d- definitely. And I mean, crossovers can happen, like uh, yeah. of different versions. Uh, so I'm all on board with it. I'm. We'll see where it goes. 
because this is all Netflix has of Marvel because now they're all going to put probably everything on their streaming service. Yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, with that, we're pretty much done. This is all we wanted to talk about today. So, yeah. Yeah. Until I haven't time. watched The Gifted either, so, you know. Oh, you haven't? No. <laughs> I'm struggling with that as well. I'm not having a good time for these kind oh, of Oh, you're going to have Runaways soon. Which apparently is really good. You know, it's, it's already got its old Rotten Tomatoes square up. Yeah. All right. Until next time. Toodles.